often we have a reaction with a favorable equilibrium constant at one temperature and unfavorable at other temperatures. We're going to examine that phenomena in this video and see how we can determine what the crossover temperature is for a particular reaction. We saw earlier that the equilibrium constant is related to delta G standard. So first, let's look at the effect of different temperatures on delta G standard. We see in the left-hand equation that the temperature dependence of delta G standard is going to depend on the signs of delta H standard and delta S standard. Let's make a table. Now let's examine four scenarios. First, let's look at a scenario where delta H standard is a negative number and delta S standard is a positive number. If we imagine putting a negative number here and a positive number here, we can see when we multiply by the absolute temperature, this whole term will be negative. So we have a negative term and a negative term. And so we can see delta G standard will always be negative. And if we have the reverse scenario, where we have an endothermic reaction that results in a decrease in entropy, we can see that if we plug in a negative here, multiplied by a negative T, that's going to give us a positive term. We have a positive delta H, so this is going to give us a positive delta G standard. And this should be delta G standard. These are all standards. Okay, so. Uh, let's look at a scenario where we have both things being negative, delta H standard and delta S standard. Well, in that case, we can see we've got a negative term. If we plug this negative in here times a negative, it's going to give a positive. So you have a negative term and a positive term, so they're in conflict. And to know the sign of this, we have to know which one of these are, is going to be bigger. So without data, we can't say right off the bat. But we can say what would happen if we crank the temperature up really, really high? Pause the video for a second and predict what would happen if you crank the temperature up really high. What would the sign of delta G standard be in that scenario? If we go to really high temperatures, that's going to make this term dominate. So if this term dominates, what's that? That's the one where there's a, a decrease in entropy. And so that's the one that this overall term is going to be a positive because of that negative sign. So that's going to make delta G positive. So we can say at high temperatures, this reaction will have a positive delta G standard. So we'll say at high T, it's going to be positive. So we have a favorable term and an unfavorable term. And the unfavorable term is temperature dependent. So it's the one that dominates the high temperature. And so we could just as well write at a low temperature, we're going to have a negative delta G standard. So we can see we go from having a, uh, a low temperature, a favorable reaction, to at high temperature having an unfavorable reaction. So this is a reaction that's going to have a crossover temperature where it goes from having a, uh, a favorable to unfavorable delta G standard. And the reverse will be true. Endothermic, so that's not favorable, but has a positive delta S, which is which is uh, favorable. So that's something where we can see that at low temperature, let's imagine, just reduce it to an absurdity, if we go to low temperature, this term doesn't matter at all, and all we have is this term, which is unfavorable. So at low temperature, this is go not going to be a favorable reaction. But we can see if we go to a high enough temperature, We've got a positive delta S standard, so at a high enough temperature, this is going to be a big negative term, and it's going to outweigh this positive term. So at high T, we're going to have a favorable reaction, the negative delta G standard. And so remember here, when we're using this language of favorable, unfavorable reaction, we're not talking about spontaneity, we're talking about does this reaction have a favorable equilibrium constant. So let's go ahead and explicitly put that in with a column for K. So we have K equilibrium, put the equilibrium in there, is related to delta G standard. So we can see if we have a positive delta G standard, that meant that your K, 
was less than 1. So the log of something less than 1 is going to be negative. So we have a negative times a negative gives us a positive. On the other hand, if you have a k greater than 1, that logarithm is positive times a negative would give you a negative delta G standard. So with all of these, we can say k is going to be less than 1 for the positive delta G standards and greater than 1 for the negative delta G standards. So we can say that for all of these here. So for these two types of reactions, we're either going to have a greater than 1 equilibrium constant or a less than 1 equilibrium constant all the time. But uh, for these other ones, it actually depends on temperature. So for instance, if we had uh, this one here, it's unfavorable at high temperature. So we have a small equilibrium constant at low temperature. We have a good equilibrium constant. Here we have a good equilibrium constant at high temperature. Oops, a good equilibrium constant. Let me fix that. And we have a small equilibrium constant at low temperature. So we can see these two classes of reaction are the ones that are going to have a crossover temperature. So here we're going to cross over from having a good equilibrium constant to having a bad one when we raise the temperature. And here we're going to go from having a bad one to a good one as we raise the temperature. Let's do an example. So imagine that we've got this reaction that's endothermic, but it has uh, a negative delta S standard. And so we're going to ask, you know, this, this is something where we've got an unfavorable entropy change, but we've got a favorable enthalpy change. So we're asking, is this one that crosses from large K to small K, or is it one that changes in the reverse? from small k to large k as we increase the temperature. And then we're going to ask, what is the crossover temperature? So looking at our equation for delta G standard, we see we've got an exothermic reaction that has a negative delta S standard. And we see that, OK, if I go to really low temperatures, this term is not going to matter. And I'm going to have a, a favorable delta G standard. But if I go to high temperatures, this term is going to matter. And because I have a negative delta S, standard, this is going to be a positive term and that's going to be bad. So this is one that's going to switch from, uh, we're going to be at low temperature, we're going to have a K equilibrium that is greater than zero, and then the opposite will be true at high temperature. Right? At high temperature, we're going to have a K equilibrium that is going to be, oh, that's a mistake. These are supposed to be ones, aren't they? I was thinking of delta G standard. There we go. OK. And uh, that reminds me. OK, so we crossed over from a K that's greater than 1 to less than 1. So the natural question is, what's the temperature where we cross? And the crossing temperature is going to be where delta G standard is equal to 0. So we know if we want to find where this is going to be equal to 1, we can see that if we plug in a 1 here, take the logarithm, that's going to be equal to 0. So delta G standard is going to be equal to 0 at the crossover temperature. So we can follow that up by reminding ourselves that delta G standard is equal to delta H standard minus T delta S standard. And so at the crossover temperature, this is equal to 0. So let's just write that. Delta H standard So we could just call this T crossover. I'll put a little CR here. So we can solve for that, and we can see the crossover temperature is going to be delta H standard divided by delta S standard. And the only thing we have to be careful about is to make sure that our units are right. So let's convert these kilojoules to joules before we calculate our answer. So we have 85,000 joules and negative 85,000 joules per mole divided by a negative 220 joules per mole per Kelvin. And we can see that the joules per mole are going to cross out. And we've got reciprocal Kelvins on the bottom, which will just give us Kelvins.
and we can see this will give us 386 kelvins. So that's the temperature at which we're going to switch from being a favorable reaction with K greater than 1 to an unfavorable reaction with K less than 1.